to Dr. Gibson and her staff for hosting us today for our school board work session and also for the public hearing. Thank you very much, Dr. Gibson. We appreciate it. <laughs> Joining uh, me tonight on the stage is our superintendent, Dr. Birdsong. <coughs> Uh, Mr. Clint has an event uh, already scheduled for this evening, so he will not be with us tonight. But we have Ms. Campson, Ms. Martin, Ms. Smith, Ms. Bassine, Mr. Jordan, and of course Ms. Tanner, our acting clerk. We also have with us this evening our school board representatives, Faith and Charity. Faith and Charity, if you could please stand. And we are, again, are so glad that all of you have uh, taken some time out of your evening to come and speak before the board. Uh, I'm just going to remind everyone of our protocol for addressing the board. Please come forth to the microphone, state your name, and if you have a child in Norfolk Public Schools or if you are employed by the system, state your position and any relevant data as it pertains to the budget. Um, if you represent a group or organization, ask the others to rise and be recognized. And please give any comments or statements uh, to our clerk so that we can have them for the record. Speakers are limited to a one-time, three-minute appearance with, when the clerk. And uh, down below, we have a three-minute timer that you'll hear a little uh, uh, beam go off, um, signaling that your time is up. Uh, when that, uh, when you hear that, that noise, uh, please quickly end the sentence that you are on and uh, be seated. The board does not respond to the citizen remarks at the time that they are given. So without further ado, um, we will go ahead and begin. Dr. Birdsong, any opening comments? Yes. Dr. Gabriel, members of the school board and members of our community, the administration and I appreciate the opportunity to receive comments from community stakeholders regarding my proposed budget for the 2020-2021 school year. As you are well aware, the development of an expenditure, expenditure plan for a school division is one of the most important jobs of leadership because it provides the resources that drive progress. For example, I encourage community stakeholders to read the school division and school level accomplishments page in the budget document. This page is testimony to the dedication of our employees who have worked diligently to address academic achievement and the needs of our 29,500 children within the resources provided to them. The proposed operating budget totals $348.3 million, which marks a 3.6% or $12.1 million increase from the current fiscal year. While this seems like a sizable increase, I would like for our community stakeholders to keep in mind that our budget will also be addressing some significant cost increases. I certainly believe that it's fair to characterize this budget budget as a relatively lean and disciplined proposal. It allows for crucial investments in four priority areas that I established prior to engaging in the process of developing the budget proposal. These four areas include compensation, safety and security, additional resources for school, schools, and building repairs and maintenance. The examination of plans for building repairs and maintenance is contained within the Capital Improvement Plan or CIP budget. I do believe it's important to note that for the 2020-2021 funding year, my CIP recommendation stands at 17 million. 16 million for maintenance and 1 million for school bus replacement which is a considerable increase from the current funded year, which stood at $4 million, $3 million for maintenance and $1 million for school bus replacement. As our community stakeholders are here and as old as Norfolk, the majority of our schools are over the age of 48 years. And the school board and administration are working with the consulting group to our facility which is a 10-year plan. This plan will identify both short-term and long-term priorities and will also address funding options. As I reported a couple of weeks ago, working together with our city funding partner, we will be striving to provide our students with buildings that are worthy of them. So at this time, we are prepared to receive feedback from our community stakeholders relative to my budget Dr. Burtz 
song. Before we begin with our speakers, I would like for us to rise and do the Pledge of Allegiance. is Taisha McCoy, also known as Ty, followed by Charlotte Smith Worley. Greetings and good evening, Superintendent Birdsong, members of the school board, and all visitors and guests. My name is Taisha McCoy, and I currently work at Lake Taylor High School as the office manager, and I have held this position throughout the district what will be 21 years this May. I worked two years in pupil personnel, currently now known as Student Services, two years at Oceanair Elementary, 10 years at Dream Keepers Academy, five years at Tidewater Park Elementary, and now I'm currently in my third year at Lake Taylor High School. I came into Norfolk Public Schools as a wife, mother of three, and a part-time student pursuing my bachelor's and MBA, working with a temp agency paying only $7.50 an hour. After working as a temp a little over 90 days in human resources, it was mentioned by a few coordinators after working with this vibrant, intelligent, stellar employee that if a position came open, would I be interested? I quickly said yes. The why behind my yes was because, of course, I could no longer work for $7.50 an hour, but because I truly enjoyed the employment and the atmosphere and the people I work with each day. I worked at the temp agency because I did not want to commit to something that was not willing to pay me at least what I felt was my worth. During those years, you are able to come into Norfolk Public Schools and speak to your experience to a degree and negotiate your contract. Because I had administrative, public, and customer relations experience and skill, I started off at that time what I thought was a fair contract. When I look back at the level of work that I had to put in, honestly, NPS could have and should have paid me an additional $20,000. We had now evolved to learning and being trained with more technology and having to come into the simplest of positions with some knowledge of some technological background. We have positions in the district that are just paid below poverty level. While it is offered, some can't even afford the benefits to be taken out of their pay. The reason I stand before you today is to ask the school board to increase the pay of the clerical one and clerical two 10 month positions at Lake Taylor High School and throughout the district. Both of these positions should be 12 month and both should be a clerical two position. When researching the other high schools in the district, I found that Booker T. Washington High School has the least amount of students with the greatest amount of clerical support. I'm sure that their clerical classified attendance is high due to the fact that they have continued support when someone is absent or if someone takes another position. Since being the office manager at Lake Taylor High School, I have yet to have a consistent full staff not because of the climate or the lack of morale, but because of the lack of pay for the work that we are asking them to do. Those that are currently in position and overworked and very underpaid, we have 400 more students, service five times as many guests, parents, and staff because we host just about all events in the district. We are constantly having someone out for illness or one thing or another, leaving the work to actually that is done for six or seven to be distributed amongst two or three in the office with no additional pay and no allow for part-time clerical assistance to handle the workload and responsibilities without proper training due to the fulfill the duties if you have been at Lake Taylor High School. You see we are still able to do and handle all, all of our duties with excellent customer service with grace under fire. I'm not just asking for the positions to be resolved with the budget one of 2020, but I am asking for this lack of sympathy or the disconnect that the school board may seem to have concerning the employees that may not have letters in front of their name or the greatest education or a tricky past or may have been dealing with economic hardship. Please remember before you can turn on a light in a classroom, heat or cool, to actually service these students in the classroom or to enroll a student you must first have the support of the support staff. So I am asking the school board to please consider this request. Thank you. Charlotte Smith Worley. I appreciate the opportunity to speak. I realize the public hearing is focused largely on the operating budget. 
I feel this is a good time to address the CIP. Earlier, a presentation was made on the proposed CIP fiscal year 2020-21. Through Dr. Birdsong's budget presentation February 19th, today's work session, I learned some good news about the CIP. In particular, I was pleased to hear the superintendent was recommending the capital budget for the next fiscal year to increase to a little more than 17 million. 16 million of that total would be allocated for school maintenance. A 16 million allocation is four times more than what is contained in the current CIP for school maintenance. It's ludicrous for the city council to think the maintenance in a school division this size, this age, can be handled on the current four million a year allocation. I have stood before the board, urge you to adopt the CIP of needs rather than agreeing to the city target that is painfully inadequate. I want to thank the superintendents to stepping forward and refusing to meet the low ball target set by the city council. At present, I'm serving on the school division's long range facilities master plan steering committee because I'm wholeheartedly dedicated to working towards the city ensuring that our school buildings are work our Norfolk children. Please support the advocates who've been working on your behalf by being an effective advocate politically. Support Dr. Birdsong's reasonable proposal. Maybe even consider enlarging a little. Send it to city council with no apologies, just firm expectations. Finally, I, I compliment you on your choice of superintendents. For years, I've been advocating for enhanced CIP. The request has largely fallen on deaf ears. Finally, we have an individual in the leader's chair who believes that students deserve better and is willing to work to see that more they get it. Thank you. Don't forget the back of my t-shirt says, Norfolk Public Schools contain children. They deserve healthy, comfortable, safe, modern, welcoming schools. Are you behind us? Next we have Mike Payne followed by John Williams. Good evening, everybody. How are you doing? All right. I'm Mike Payne, General of the Original Black Panthers of VA. And um, I've heard different proposals, uh, people saying that we should get security in the schools and different things like that, more security. But I'm here to tell you that I do not believe we should have more security. I think we should have more uh, counselors. If anything, uh, security guards are for prisons and I don't want our children feeling like they're constantly trapped in a prison, and I don't want to have to come to the school protesting because some overzealous security guard is throwing one of our children on the floor. Um, I know that one in five children are in poverty in the United States, and 30% of uh, those children in poverty don't graduate high school. Now, I know you can't do anything about the poverty level, but you can do something to help them fight poverty, which is make sure that they're educated. And I don't want, I want to let everyone know that there is no throwaway children. We don't have throwaway children. Uh, but I believe there are teachers that are just saying, hey, it's easy to get the ones that are a problem out of the classroom and teach the ones that are, you know, more uh, willing to learn and they're throwing them out. And when you have, 10 and 20 day suspensions and things like that, you miss a lot of school. And you start to, uh, you're becoming uneducated basically, you're not getting the education that you need. So what I wanna say is, 
me as a child, even sharing my story, when I got a black history class, I learned that I could get A's and B's. When I learned about world history, I learned I could get A's and B's with just concentration, but these kids have to be stimulated. If they're not stimulated and they don't know who they are, and I've said this to you before, then they don't have that urge to push a lot of times. And if you haven't been stripped of your identity before, then maybe you don't know what I'm talking about. But when you know who you are, you do better and you respect uh, the school system as a whole, you respect education as a whole, and I believe they really need that. So I'm asking you, please, uh, if you could, consider it. I have programs, I've made programs, and I'd be uh, happy to share them with you as far as putting black history into the schools. Because not just for the white children and the black children, I think, I think it helps all. Um, it helps with empathy, it helps to understand each other, it helps for the cohesiveness of uh, uh, the school uh, as a whole. So that's what I propose. Um, and if you cannot give programs, I would like to see uh, more counselors because some of these kids out here, you know, they're worrying about where their next meal comes from. Some of them are out here worrying about, you know, where their uh, mother is at night. Some of them are worried about how to take care of their family, their brother, how to pay the rent, and nobody's inquiring what's wrong with the children. They're just kicking them out and saying it's a bad seed. It's a bad child. He has a problem. He's disruptive. Let's put him out. But sometimes we need to really get down to what's wrong with that child and what's going on. And once we do that and start understanding them a little bit better, I think we'll have some better students because they do want to learn and they do want to know more because we teach them on the street every day. Thank you. Because 
we do need the schools to be clean, the kids learn better when they come into a nice, clean school, a nice, safe, clean school. And um, I want you to look at the raises that you're going to give for all the employees and see if you can kind of tweak it a little bit. Because I know we're going to have like the raise and the um, health insurance, but see what y'all can do for us. And in closing, I want to thank y'all for everything that y'all gonna do for Norfolk Public Schools. And um, we gotta stick together, do it together, move forward to have a number one school system. Thank you for all you do. Next we have Ada Blair, followed by Vivian Monroe Hester. Good evening, everyone. Dr. Bersheim, first I would like to say to the committee, what took you so long? The superintendent was right in front of you all the time, and you're looking other places. I, like, I represent the community. I don't have children in Norfolk Public School, but I do represent the communities, and I try to work hard to make sure that we have a vital community. At one time, we had a slogan that says, come home to Norfolk, and it was based upon our schools but they have fallen down terribly. If you go to the computer and look for a home for $300,000 or more, then look right in the next column and see what it has to say about that school. Dr. Bersheim's proposed budget is outstanding, and that's the reason I'm, I'm here, because I took time to read it and to go over everything that she has listed here, and they're all vitally needed so that we can get our schools back up to standards where they once were. The only thing that I'd like for you to add is that you would put more perils with some of these uh, preschoolers. I would like to see a peril in every classroom from pre-K to third grade, because after that, that would help our students. They would have the true foundation that they need to carry on. They would be able to handle the problems that we have and it would really enhance our schools. And I think that if you did that, you would see less problems when they went up to the middle schools or high schools. Thank you. Good evening. First of all, I'd like to uh, congratulate Dr. Birdsong on becoming our superintendent. And I would like to uh, uh, greet the um, school board. And I'm speaking here tonight on behalf of Booker T. Washington High School. As individual organizations, we, the officers and members of the Booker T. Washington High School Foundation, concerned citizens of Booker T. Washington High School and the Booker T. Washington Parent Teacher uh, Student Association wish to thank you for your dedication and service. We present this letter of advocacy for the continuance of quality education for our beloved school. The purpose of this letter is to request that you include in Norfolk Public Schools capital budget for 2020 a request to the City Council for a line item earmarked for design and construction of a new Booker T. Washington High School on its current site with the same name. It is time for the elected leadership and sit industry uh, to acknowledge and support Booker T. for its enormous contribution to the city at large. The lives of tens of thousands of alumni as well as citizens of Norfolk have been positively enhanced for more than 100 years by the programs and curriculums of the historic Booker T. Washington High School. Our vision for Booker T. Washington is one of opportunities for students to dream and to transform their lives through academic excellence and social involvement. The academic excellence is a part of our African American heritage of which we are very proud. In retrospect, Booker T. Washington High School is not just a school, but rather it is a culture and represents the very fiber of Norfolk's African-American community. 
it is time to restore and preserve the legacy and health of BTW. History reveals that African Americans had to struggle, but we eagerly sacrificed pursued to pursue education. That struggle is a significant part of our experience and history. In the face of segregation, Jim Crow laws, prejudicial opinions and inequities, Booker T. Washington High School stood as a beacon of hope and prosperity. In considering where we are today, we are compelled to ask what happened to our school in desegregation. Our sad response, we failed to secure Booker T. Washington's history for future generations. Therefore, we must immediately recapture our, and secure our legacy. Booker T. Washington is a vital part of Norfolk's story. When we do the right thing and build a new Booker T. Washington and develop an educational program second to none, it will restore the history and quality of life for all who live and work in Norfolk. Again, we request that you include Norfolk Pub in Norfolk Public Schools capital budget for 2020, the request to the City Council for a line item earmarked for design and construction of a new Booker T. Washington High School. And this is signed by uh, the president of the foundation, PTA, and Concerned Citizens. Thank you very much. Next we have Vicki Greco, followed by Jackie Glass. Good evening. My name is Vicki Manuga Greco, and I'm a fully invested NPS graduate and parent, persistent PTA and school board advisory committee volunteer, and unapologetic advocate for the entire school division so all students and schools rise. I know I'm only one of many, many state NPS stakeholders and one who regularly comes to school board work and business meetings to hold watch while you work in public or when I can't be there with you in person, I watch later online. I'm only one of the many voters who composes comments to share my concerns with you all at our public meetings throughout the school year so that those concerns are entered into public record and thus shared with internal and external stakeholders and the public. As someone who believes in the power of sunshine as in an illuminating it disinfected, my constant worry is that sometimes important governance processes and issues are buried or never brought to light under the laborious but always necessary process of democracy in action and the intended engagement, but sometimes less than authentic efforts for transparency, accountability, and community involvement. So please take note, because I'm not gonna give you a personal call or send you a private email. I'm here tonight, as with other budget hearings over the years, and just last month when I asked you all for an independent city attorney to share my thoughts regarding the proposed operations budget for the next school year. First, our utmost priority, our children, our learners, deserves teachers and staff who are given highly competitive and meaningful increases in pay and benefits for the crucial work they do in and outside of our contract hours. I will point out that our longer serving veteran staff support, support staff and faculty must have increases, not insignificant adjustments to pay scales and steps so that they receive appropriate and fair pay. Also, if this budget is built on the priority of the security and safety of all children, then I ask for the necessary human resources to hire, retain, and train more teachers, counselors, social workers, school psychologists, and all staff who work directly with our kids so they get consistent and continuous and quality professional development and being culturally sensitive, trauma-informed, and know how to accomplish true inclusion for all our learners, from our kids with disabilities, to our kids who have high ability and exceptional gifts, and all the kids in the middle who are often forgotten, and just as deserving of safe, secure schools, not filled with security officers, but with the <coughs> educators who can teach and reach them in and out of the classroom through respectful, thoughtful learning relationships. Regarding the long-deferred repairs and maintenance of a minimal triage of maintenance of our many of our city's old school buildings, please ask the city for more money. Ensure that all schools have secured entrances and exits and healthy insides. Thank you for actively listening to your constituents, our collective community concerns about resource funding and finding for all children and the teachers who teach them and the buildings they learn and grow in. Uh, 
good evening and thank you all for your service. I'm Jackie Glass. I have two little citizens in Norfolk Public Schools. So um, when I got the opportunity to look at the budget, um, I, one thing that brought me here was the fact that we were putting um, security officers in schools. So I tried to find where this was actually a need, where, what data points did we come to that we decided that we needed to do this in our elementary schools, which led me to the school board accountability plan for 20, 20, 20, 21. And so the one thing that I think maybe this came from was uh, one of the school priorities was to promote a culture of safety, high attendance rates, positive organizational culture, and student um, um, behaviors. And what was interesting was is that over 85% of the kids in Norfolk Public School have no incidents, right? There are no incidents. So there's only about 12% of students that actually have an out-of-school suspension or a short-term suspension. Um, of those children, 80% of the, of the 12%, 80% are black, 81% are economically disadvantaged, and 22% have disabilities. Those are the only numbers that have double digits. So what that tells me is that, you know, that they're black probably disadvantaged students and students with disabilities that are in, that are having to be out of school for certain behaviors. And, and having school resource officers or school security officers um, didn't really sound like the best thing because when you guys went and you took and you looked at what the teachers wanted, what the students wanted, what the parents thought were priorities, they said, the teachers said, trust in teachers, feel safe, and trust in administration. The students said, trust in teacher relationships, trust in discipline. The parents said, student-teacher relationships, school involvement, and child safety. Now the thing that I heard a lot was trust, right? So that is relationship building. Yes, you have PBIS, but I think that means we need to have a little bit more committed effort of what that actually looks like inside of the schools. But, but officers are not the fix of this. We know that all of those children that we say are coming in in problems, they walk into our schools with those issues. I would urge that as you guys create your budget, that at some point you take more time to speak with city council because these are community problems that our children walk right into the doors of NPS with, that you guys can take the, the, the efforts and the lead to working with the city to, from, to make communities, to bring citizens into our schools that are in a better place. Um, rather than spending $27,650 totaling for the number of school resource officers or officers that you guys are, security officers you guys are asking for, $799, $1,188. That's a lot of money. I can do a lot of great things for our citizens outside of have somebody standing in and looking at them. Um, last, if we're really going to grapple with the deep educational inequities, right, if we're going to put our money where our mouth is when we talk about inequities, let's have a, um, a school, a divisional equity officer. That, that might be something, someone that knows what they're doing, knows what they're talking about, and can give some committed solution that is in the business of equity, not just let's talk about the fancy word or use it as a buzzword. Lastly, I know that you guys have said that you're gonna, it's the consultant with the school start, start times. It would be very great if we knew how much money that we were put, still investing in a contractor that wasn't providing a service to us. Because we're talking about a budget right now and there's gotta be some money you're putting in to keep this contract on board. The very minimum we should know that because that's money that can be going to other things and we can keep it rolling. Thank you for your time. Louis Jordan followed by Barrett Hicks. Good evening, Madam Chairman, members of the school board, Dr. Birdsong, and congratulations, Dr. Birdsong. My name is Louis Jordan, I'm a native of Norfolk, graduate of Norfolk Public Schools, I have a daughter that's a senior at Granby this year, uh, and I'm not an employee, but I have served on the GIAC committee for the last five years at the Education Advisory Council. A year ago, we came to the board with a short list of recommendations. At that time, we were told to wait and see because the school board was anticipating a report on study of Norfolk's gifted education services from the College of William Mary. One year later, we're before you again, the report, which was completed in December, has still not been placed on your docket, and it shows in the, in the proposed budget for 2021. It appears that none of the GX recommendations to the school board have been addressed. From 2007 to 2021, funding for gifted education has remained relatively flat. The number of gifted teachers has actually decreased from 42 to 32. Yet every year for the last 10 years, the GIAC has recommended an increase in gifted teachers. The reduction in gifted teachers is most evident in the inconsistent delivery services to gifted and high ability students. Gifted services from school to school are inconsistent 
because we still do not have a full that gifted resource teacher in every building. As another example, the gifted middle school program boasts an accelerated curriculum of the use of the autonomous learner model. However, the gifted teacher implementing this model was removed several years ago and has not been replaced. The stated goal, goals in this year's budget include equity and consistency of gifted services in all schools across the district and ensuring all identified students receive the appropriate services needed to reach their full potential. Neither of these goals can be accomplished with the current number of gifted teachers. Furthermore, one of the MPS goals for gifted education is to increase the number of gifted students scoring pass advanced on SLL exams and getting a score of three or better on AP exams. It's nearly impossible to have a positive impact on the achievement of these goals without sufficient gifted staff to provide professional development training and collaboration to honors and AP teachers. So what do we want? We want gifted teachers to have the tools needed to, do effective, to be effective at their jobs. We have repeatedly asked for at least one full-time gifted research teacher in every school. So let's start now. We respectfully request one full-time gifted resource teacher be budgeted for every school for the next budget year. We have high expectations for all of our students, which includes our gifted high school high and high ability students. Please show us that you do too. Thank you very much. Good evening, Dr. Gabriel, uh, Dr. Bergson, and Gordon. I want to thank you guys for doing the right thing and making sure that Dr. Bergson was in place. You know what I, you know the respect I have for you. Uh, for, just for people to know, I, I don't I don't know her other than from what the work I've seen, and I'm proud of you, ma'am. Get the job done. Come tonight, looking at your budget, actually, I, I didn't realize that uh, uh, you actually put in what I truly came to talk about. <laughs> that hopefully a uh, certified STEM instructor. I, I see you have here that you're going to put in instructional specialist, but we definitely need a certified STEM instructor at Campus STEM, Southside STEM. I, I, it's a long time coming. I mean, with the people that did the work to, to create that Southside STEM, we looked at truly a STEM academy. I, I think you understand that. And I think the board understands that now. And I just want to say thank you, insight, leadership. That's what we expect. That's what we need for our children. Um, also, I've, uh, this, this past year, really I've been working with the athletes. Uh, throughout the schools and we need some after school tutorial programs for these athletes. These athletes are winning state championships but we're not seeing them at the next level. So if they have the athletic ability, what's stopping us from seeing them at the college level? It has to be academics. So I would hope that you guys can find something within the budget or as you talk to your principals We've got to make that happen. We need some out-school tutorials, to tutors in place. And I, I, again, I'm through my organization, Calvary Connection Alumni Association, we will help. We know that that's what we need, and we need to make that happen. There's no question about that. As we look at uh, bringing in consultants, I mean, I think you guys made a huge mistake bringing in a consultant even to look for the superintendent. I think I made that clear. We had the proper person in place. So let's not waste money. Let's not waste money where we can put it other places and whatnot. One of the suggestions would be definitely looking to bring in outside agencies to look at our programs, such as our programs in our uh, pre-K-4 programs. I've shared that with you guys over and over again. I heard about the stats to tell me that schools like Chesterfield are on the same level. They're not. They're not. So if, if we're going to use consultants, let's bring somebody in from an outside to take a look at those type of programs. And again, I know a lot of it is allocated from the state, but if the state is getting it wrong, they're getting it wrong. Let's, let's 
do what's right for children. Truly what's right for children. I thank you for the time. Dr. Bernstein, make it happen. Thank you. Philip Hawkins, Jr., followed by Joshua Stone. Good evening, School Board Chair Dr. Noel Gabriel, Dr. Bursong Superintendent, members of the Norfolk School Board. Good evening, thank you for having me here tonight and all of us to speak in, on the budget. My name is Philip Hawkins Jr. I'm a pre-kindergarten teacher in Norfolk Public Schools. I work at the P.B. Young Senior Elementary School and I've been a teacher with Norfolk for 23 years all of my experience um, in various different schools in the early childhood level. And I'm also a proud member of the Education Association of Norfolk, the EAN, local affiliate of the Virginia Education Association, and actually the NEA, and the immediate past president of that organization. Tonight, I wear red for ed in support of higher funding for our students, our staff, and our schools. As you can see, red is sprinkled around the room tonight and on Wednesdays, every Wednesday for the last three years, we have been wearing red in support of this movement. And I want to thank each and every one of you for supporting this effort as you have worked very tirelessly on this proposed budget. I want to thank Dr. Birdsong and congratulate you on your new appointment as superintendent and you have my full support. And EAN, I know we will stand and work with you. Um, I've looked at the highlights of the budget and I'm in very strong support of these items. However, there are some things that I think we may want to relook at before we come up with a final budget. One being first and foremost, the compensation. Um, I would like to ask, instead of it being a 3.4% raise, that it would be moved up to 5% because we know that the state, we are working with our state officials to bring more money to the local. So hopefully the General Assembly will be able to offer more funding that will support that effort for our teachers, and not only our teachers, but especially our paraprofessionals and classified staff, who are currently, many of them are working at or below the poverty level when we talk about their salaries. So that would help them as well if we can bring them up to between 20 to $25 an hour. Many of them are not making a living wage. Um, other areas I thought would be improved that we would need to look at is where would this, um, I noticed a new pre-K class is coming <laughs> online next year. I would like to see that class at a Title I school with its majority as a minority population such as Lindenwood Elementary School. Currently that school only has one pre-K class. And so if we could have two pre-K four classes there, that would help increase the service, serviceability at that, in that community. Also, um, the special ed programs in our district need severe attention. Many schools are underserved with special ed programs and resources. Um, we all know the story. We heard it month after month. So please help us make sure our students are properly placed in our schools. Many of them are in schools that they're not, based on their needs, they're not being met. And so the teachers are doing the best they can but we need to be able to do more for them. And, and it's the law. And unfortunately, I know this is a bigger issue than just Norfolk. This is a federal issue because we're not funded at the federal level properly for IDEA. But we have to find some way to do better. Um, another area would be the behavior specialists. We need those at the schools, the minority schools. My school, PB Young, we don't have a behavior specialist. So those students have to be um, moved around to different places to provide support to them during the day. I will close on that and I will send the remaining comments to you directly through email. Thank you. Good evening. Sorry about double, <coughs> double duty today. Uh, first, I would like to congratulate Dr. Birdsong as well. Um, I've heard nothing but amazing things, and so that means a lot as a teacher in our district. Uh, to constantly hear positive feedback from everybody 
<coughs> excuse me, sorry, of how excited they are to have you come on board. So thank you, and I'm excited to, to see what comes in the future. Um, usually I have a much more prepared speech, but again, double duty and I ran out of time. My drum line was practicing earlier here. Uh, I'm Joshua Stone. I'm the band director at Granby High School, for those of you that don't know me. Uh, I've been at Norfolk for nine years. I'm also a graduate of Norfolk Public Schools and Granby High School. Uh, I attended Chesterfield Academy, uh, Ruffner, and Granby High School. Uh, and I've also taught at Ruffner and Granby High School. So, <laughs> um, I had a lot of things prepared that a lot of people have already covered, and I fully support the things that they've said as far as uh, the teacher pay. Um, as far as knowing some of you, um, I've, I've spoken with you on a more personal basis before. Uh, my wife also works for a city councilman, so I have their perspective as well. So I do understand the challenges as far as formulating these budgets. It is extremely difficult, and I understand the city council side as far as how difficult it is to try to figure out where the funding is going to come from, where they're pulled in so many different directions. Uh, I, I do ask that we try to find a way to bridge the gap between what teachers, what incoming teachers are being paid. I saw that that was being raised as far as the new teacher salary. However, I've been in, in the system for nine years now, and I'm on step four. Uh, so, it would, and I was on step two for <laughs> that was until the last two years. Um, so, I, I would like to see that that gap at least closed. And I, I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to be honest. I love it here, uh, but I do know several teachers that more than several teachers that have left because of that to go to other districts. Um, even teachers that have left Norfolk for a year and come back and been offered a position on step. Uh, so that's kind of discouraging. Uh, the, the next thing I would like to speak on is everybody, we've had gifted education, we've had tier one, tier two, tier three students, underserved, um, we've had everything except the arts. And with that, as far as the budget goes, I, I, I know we're not, you're not able to answer my questions, but I would like to see where the $3.7 million is coming from to pay for the school time change. Um, I was not in for the full meeting earlier, um, so I don't know if that was discussed. However, I can tell you how it will affect my program as a band director. Personally, I would love to sleep in and, and get to work at nine and, and teach by day and end at four. That'd be great. But that's not the reality. The reality is I'll have marching band practice every day until seven. And my students in the marching band program have a 3.6 GPA. They're IB students, they're AP students, but they're also those underserved students, uh, th those poverty students and Title I students, they are. Uh, I, have, I found out today one of my students is homeless. Uh, I've had a student whose house is burned down. And it's a family, sorry. <laughs> it's a family between us, so I work with all of these students. Um, and this program will affect us immensely. And I've spoken with all of the band directors in the city, and we all feel very similarly. I tried to get confirmation before I came here today, so I don't want to speak on behalf of everyone. Uh, but I would like to say that by, sorry, by cutting those programs, those students that have jobs that are helping to support their families won't be able to anymore. So their parents are going to pull them out of my program. Um, we, we have multiple community citizens, as well as you all, that are concerned with the size of our marching band programs, and they see them in parades. It's going to be cut in half instantly. I've already got 10 seniors graduating next year on top of the fact that these students will no longer be able to participate because their parents are going to be concerned about them keeping their grades up, maintaining a job, to be able to pay for their car and their car insurance, which is something that I had to do when I was in school. So uh, I would like to just bring that up as a concern. I'm sorry for the distraction. Um, and one last thing, if we could uh, look, take a look at the paternity, um, since I have her here as a prop, if we could take a look at the paternity uh, clause as far as only getting one week off um, as compared to Chesapeake and Virginia Beach, where they confirmed with HR that they get up to 60 days as long as they have the sick leave. I had 55 days of sick leave saved up, and I was allowed to use one week. So, thank you. Next we have Sierra Lewis, followed by Vicki Kern. My name is Sierra Lewis, and I am a producer and a member of Virginia Organizing. On behalf of the uh, Virginia Organizing, we'd like to express our gratitude and thanks to taking the time to listen to us and, impl and implementing the PBIS 
initi initiative. By incorporating practices such as PBIS into our schools, we are standing up against the school to prison pipeline and creating a new standard. Zero tolerance and school related arrests do not work. They push kids out of the classroom and into a cell. Texas A&M University did a study and found that kids who are suspended are nearly three times as much to come into contact with the justice system within the next year. That same study found that 23% of those students disciplined at school had some contact with the juvenile justice system compared to just the 2% students who had not been disciplined. And this is a nefarious system out to rob our children. It's when the communities and schools work together that we can dismantle the school to prison pipeline. We do that by implementing restorative justice, recognizing positive behavior and, adequate, and adequately training teachers, staff, and involving the community. These methods work. Oakland Unified School District is proof that it works. Their school saw a reduced dropout rate, higher graduation rates, in addition to reading levels improving and chronic absenteeism decreasing. By adding these measures into the, bud into the budget, the board is not only investing in these students, they're investing within the community. Thank you. Hi, good evening, Superintendent Birdsong, members of the school board. Uh, my name is Vicki Curran, and although I taught in the Norfolk Public Schools from 1971 to 1977, I'm here tonight on behalf of Virginia. would like to thank you. You listened to us, to all of our many requests, and you have added many of them to your budget for 2020, 2021. You've addressed structured in-school suspensions in all of your schools and are making way for the realignment of a division level administrator to lead the re-engineering of the NPS PBIS initiative with the goal of implementing the plan with fidelity. Professional development in PBIS will also be a part of this plan. There will be a focus on the development of an internship program for school psychologists to provide additional social and emotional supports to students. We feel that these changes will provide our children and educators with a safer and more productive learning environment. We thank you so much. Thank you for coming to share your comments and please get home safely.